a lot of Ronaldo fans I see on TikTok and social media in general, they almost re reference that, that Morocco match as like doomsday. Like the day like their footballing fandom almost like got crushed. Like it was just a moment for them that was like the worst sporting football moment of my, of my life as a fan, if you're a Ronaldo fan. I promise you guys right now, if Portugal had lost tonight to Slovenia, it would have magnified, it would have quadrupled, quintupled, sextupled that Morocco match, just like that. I don't even know where to start right now. First, I, I do know where to start. We're gonna talk about Ronaldo. Let me give a few honorable mentions to a few guys. Diogo Costa, put some Ws in the chat for Diogo Costa. Diogo Costa right now, they need to build him a statue outside of Portugal right now, bro. You know that that Fugazi Ronaldo statue, the ugly face that they made in the airport? Wherever that is right now, you gotta go build Diogo Costa one as well too. You gotta go build Diogo Costa one as well. Look, Slovenia's penalties weren't great, but still, to say three in a row like that, Diogo Costa basically had a huge mansion, right? The biggest, like, Hugh Hefner-sized mansion. He owns that kind of property in Slovenia's head at the moment. Forget about the penalties, though. Forget about the penalties. That's just one thing. That's just the three. For it to even get the penalties to begin with, five minutes left and extra time. Benjamin Sesko threw on goal. Pepe's heart is in his mouth. Pepe saw his life flash before his eyes right there. Pepe, the most experienced player on Portugal, the most experienced player at this tournament, a guy that we've been talking about in the last few weeks, it's like he doesn't age. Hey, he, he looked every one of his 41 years tonight because Benjamin Sesco, on his ass, finds himself one-on-one -on -one with the opportunity to send Portugal home crying, to send Slovenia to the quarterfinals of the Euros. And who was there to stop him? Diogo Costa. So please, chat. Spam some W's in the chat for Diogo Costa. If I have any Portuguese government members of parliament at this moment in my chat, uh, I'm sure you guys are massive fans of this channel. Please consider building this man a statue because he saved Portugal tonight. He saved Portugal tonight. There's no question about it. Portugal were, were downright average tonight. At times, it was a pathetic watch from Portugal. If they had gone home tonight, no one would have been able to say they didn't deserve to. But Diogo Costa ensures that Portugal sees another day. So big up Diogo Costa. Benjamin Sesco, look man. I know you got your agent on your phone right now yelling at you saying, bro, you just cost me 15 million in agent fees right now. Whatever fee Benjamin Sesco's agent in Leipzig thought they were getting uh, for their client this summer, take away one digit, take away one digit. He's not ready this year. He's not ready this year. Sesco, you know what it is, yeah? I'm not going to say he's a scrub. I'm not going to say he's overrated. Oh, he, he, like people should just sell their stocks in him. Clearly there's talent. But in Benjamin Sesco, I A, see a lot of stuff that I see in Skamaka and something that Zlatan has talked a lot about in his early career. Zlatan, let me tell you guys a story real quick, guys. I know you guys are, are mostly here for Ronaldo and we're going to talk about Ronaldo, but let me tell you guys a story that Zlatan speaks about very often, right? Zlatan is... Obviously, right, one of the most talented forwards, especially for his size, that we have ever seen. Maybe only Van Basten is a bigger talent at that size. But when you look at Sesko, I'm sure that he looks at Zlatan a lot in his game in terms of big guys who have a really good touch, really good technically, can shoot from distance. Zlatan is a crazy talent for his size. But Zlatan often talks about when he first moved to Juventus from Ajax. And Fabio Capello was his manager at the time. And Fabio Capello took him away from training one time and basically pulled him into his office and told Zlatan this. Zlatan, you are an unbelievable talent, an unbelievable player. But your biggest issue is that you're too in love with the ball. You always want to come deep. You always want to come short. You always want to have the ball at your feet. But real center forwards, the best center forwards, learn to play for large amounts of the game without touching it. How do you affect the game and score goals without always wanting to have the ball at your feet? And... He told him, come back to me. He gave him, he gave him a cassette of Marco Van Basten and all his best goals for AC Milan. And he said, watch this tape of Van Basten and come back to me. And Zlatan credits Fabio Capello and his advice. And of course, that, that tape of Marco Van Basten for kind of not rewiring the way he thought about football, but giving him a new outlook. I look at Benjamin Sesco at the moment and um, it's kind of similar. I can't lie. Benjamin Sesco wants the ball too much at his feet. It's too much ball to feet. There was this instance, right, where Slovenia's right back bombs forward. Sesko, there's one man in the box, basically Pepe, I think. And Sesko, instead of darting either back post, uh, middle of the penalty box, uh, near post, instead of making a run, making defenders sweat, trying to get on the end of a cross. The only striker, by the way, he wants to drop to the top of the box to receive it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the entire issue. Sesko right now is too in love with having the ball at his feet. Too in love with having the ball at his feet. And yeah, look, that miss is going to haunt him, man. That's a bad, bad miss. It's not to say he's a bad player because anyone can miss those chances, but it's a miss for a player that this kind of moment is just too early for him.
sad reality. Okay, this is bad. Mistiano Penaldo from the BBC. Cam, first of all, I thought when you said that, I thought they tweeted that or something like that. They put that on national television. That's shambolic. I do hear that. But that's a perfect segue into the bigger conversation here, right? Let's talk about Cristiano Ronaldo, right? That's the title of the stream. That's what I tweeted out. Let's talk about him, right? He is extremely fortunate tonight extremely fortunate that Diego Costa has just turned up as big as he is. Diego Costa has spared Cristiano Ronaldo's blushes tonight. But realistically, right, Ronaldo has gotten away with it tonight, but I think the bigger question mark is going forward. I've never seen in my life, guys, right? I've seen Ronaldo have bad moments before. I've seen Ronaldo play bad games, but I've never seen Cristiano Ronaldo mentally break down the way he did after that penalty miss. We witnessed in that moment, in that split second, a guy renowned for his bulletproof mentality, a guy that in big moments, people have said they'd put their life on him in those moments. Miss a penalty, which is not the end of the world. We've seen Ronaldo miss penalties, but almost completely break down mentally. The tears on display at halftime when, look, you've mi you missed a big moment, but the game's not over. There's still 15 minutes left. And you as the captain, as the senior statesman, have to get the group together. You have to put those kinds of moments in the back of your head and persevere and continue. And I know it's easier said than done. Me, I'm, I'm sitting on the sofa. I'm just watching it, right? But this is what we've seen from all of the all-time greats. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say Ronaldo is an all-time great right now. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to diminish him of that status. He is an all-time great, which is what makes what I saw so shocking. I saw Cristiano Ronaldo, renowned as the greatest mentality that... Forget just football, sport, one of the greatest mentalities sport has ever seen. Break down, and honestly, those next 15 minutes as well too. He didn't. I don't think he touched the ball the entire second half of extra time. I don't think he touched the ball a single time in second half. And it almost looked like he looked defeated. He was literally not strolling around, like head down, just like going through the motions. He looked defeated in that moment. And honestly, right? When the full-time whistle ends, Portugal's heads sink, and Slovenia's heads and Slovenia's fans rise. They're shouting. They think they've won the game because, look, Slovenia over 120 minutes, it's hard to go toe-to-toe -to -toe on a football level with Portugal. But the minute you get the penalties, your goal is achieved. Now you've made it a 50-50 game. And at that moment, I was convinced Slovenia were going to win. But this is where, for me, Diogo Costa deserves massive, massive, massive credit. Because if Ilicic scores his first penalty against Diogo Costa, and then Ronaldo is taking the first penalty after he just missed, and after that kind of moment is still in his head, I think Diogo Costa saving that penalty almost allowed everybody to breathe again. Normality was kind of restored. Port Portugal fans were no longer on edge. And then I think all of a sudden, it took so much pressure off Ronaldo's shoulders. Because if Ronaldo had to respond immediately after Ilicic took that penalty and scored, I'm very, very scared about what would have happened. I'm extremely scared about what would have happened. Because Ronaldo was not in the right headspace to suddenly take a penalty right after Ilicic had scored. I don't think so. I genuinely believe there was a huge chance he would have missed that. And even the way he took it, right? Me and Cam were watching it together. The stutter is something I haven't seen from Ronaldo's penalties probably since Petr Cech in 2008. But the stutter, which Oblak didn't fall for, and then going the same way that Oblak went, I promise you a split second, a millisecond, nothing more. In my heart, I thought he missed. And it was just an amazing penalty. It was just an amazing penalty. But that's the margins, right? And obviously, as we know, the rest is history. But I don't think we can we can not talk about Ronaldo's performance just because Portugal won. I went into this tournament saying, guys, I do think for Portugal to really do something serious at this tournament, eventually, we are going to have to address the elephant in the room. And that's how much of a role can Ronaldo play? I'm not trying to say here that Ronaldo shouldn't play for Portugal. I'm not trying to say he can't feature whatsoever. I'm not trying to say that every game he should be on the bench. But I believe this firmly. Ronaldo should not be untouchable on this team. And, and at the moment, he is untouchable on this team. The fact that Ronaldo lasted 120 minutes today after that performance is nothing except for the fact that he is Cristiano Ronaldo and Roberto Martinez has that much uh, admiration and respect for him. And of course you have to, he's the captain. He's the greatest figure, forget sportsman, the greatest figure Portugal has ever produced. He is bigger than Portugal. I get that. But Cristiano Ronaldo was not fit to finish that game tonight. He wasn't. And at some point, we have to address it. His performances are massively, massively hindering his team. We're talking about a guy that is barely touching the ball throughout the game, consistently asking for the ball. And I do believe his presence and the respect his teammates have for him, which is normal, but the respect and his presence is literally causing his team to spam crosses at such a high rate that it's completely killing any kind of motion and rhythm that Portugal can gain. Every time they get the ball, I've, I haven't seen a team at this tournament cross the ball as much as Portugal. And I don't think it's because that's the way they play. I think it's really, when you see Cristiano Ronaldo in the box, that's the way you automatically kind of want to play towards. Get the ball to him. Get the ball to him. Get the ball to him. And Cristiano Ronaldo in the past, it's a brilliant idea. We're talking about the guy with the greatest movement, one of the greatest finishers this game has ever seen, an animal in the air, a physical beast. 
But here's the biggest issue of Ronaldo right now. Cristiano Ronaldo's movement is not the issue right now. Cristiano Ronaldo's movement in front of goal is just as sharp as it's always been. He'll never lose that. His instincts in the box are second to none. The biggest issue of Ronaldo is that his body can no longer match his mind. He knows the movements to make. He's making the correct movements, but he doesn't have the, the little extra jump in his step that he did when he was 27, 28, 29. Forget about that. When he was 34, 35, 36, he's getting to the right positions. The ball is, is in the right area and he's, he's in place to meet it, but his body cannot complete the action. We've seen it so many times at this Heroes now. Look at how frustrated he is when he's like a millisecond away from heading it in. It's not a coincidence that Ronaldo has been a millisecond away from tapping in a goal or from getting the head on it about like 60 times at this tournament. It's not a coincidence anymore because his body can no longer match up to what his mind wants to do. And I'm sorry, that's the point for every professional player when their body can't match up to their mind that you have to, to sit down and realize I'm not what I used to be anymore, man. I can't do the things I, I once did at such a great level. What's the solution? I don't know. I, I really, really, really don't know. It might even be too late at this point now to completely just drop him and, and start somebody else. And that's not even I'm suggesting going to just automatically solve Portugal's problems because Portugal have a lot of problems. It's not just Cristiano Ronaldo. He's the big guy. So we're going to focus on him today, especially that performance. But Portugal have more problems than just Cristiano Ronaldo. But he is an issue. The only issue is, is it too late and now in this tournament to completely change the way you want to play? Because if you drop Ronaldo and you bring in Jota or you bring in Gonzalo Ramos, inevitably you're going to have to change tactics. And I just think playing against France, who haven't been great themselves, but they know who they are and defensively are extremely solid, I don't know if it's a little too late to change the game plan. To be a true, do we even play without him? I think you play Jota. I think you play Jota as like not an out and out number nine, but as a guy who is going to kind of make those runs in behind, is a bit more mobile than Ronaldo, still has really great uh, movement, is a really, really good finisher with both feet and his head. I think you play Jota. But uh, gen genuinely, I, I find no pleasure as well talking about it this way, right? I know a lot of people think that like I'm Ronaldo's biggest hater or whatever, but genuinely, I was watching today's game and I was actually like thinking to myself, yo, if Portugal lose this game, this is going to be like an extremely, an extremely like sad day for football. Because look, I get it. Father time catches up to everybody. But the way it would have caught up to Ronaldo today if they had lost, the conversations, the dialogue around Ronaldo today if they had lost, that would have been very uncomfortable to cover. I think, I think it's got to be Jota, guys. I, I think it absolutely has to be Jota. Like, guys, you can't leave Ronaldo out there next game against Saliba. He, Saliba is going to manhandle Cristiano Ronaldo. He's going to manhandle him. Saliba is everything in 2024 that Cristiano Ronaldo isn't. Fit, sharp, athletic, front-footed, quick off the mark, an athletic beast, brilliant in the air. Talk about his man. <laughs> That's without even talking about him as a footballer. Cristiano Ronaldo against Saliba is going to be an issue. Another thing, right? Another thing. Please, guys. We've known it for years now, right? But we, we allow it, right? Because it's iconic. But someone has to get this guy off free kicks. Someone has to get this guy off free kicks now. I'm sorry it's getting ridiculous. It is getting ridiculous, guys. Every single set piece he's taking. I think that the stat at one point today was one in 60. One in his last 60 free kicks has been a goal. And I'm not saying he has to score one every 10. Of course not. But one in 60. You're telling me if other players hadn't taken a free kick in that time, the ratio, the rate wouldn't be better than one in 60. It has to be said, right? It has to be said. Some people are going to think I'm hating right now. But guys, the proof's in the pudding. These free kicks aren't it anymore, man. We get it. We see the... The deep breath, the, the outstretched legs, the, the, the deep run-up, the long run-up, finding the valve. We get it. It's cool. It was an amazing gimmick back in the day. He used to, to, to hit those with such velocity. Everyone wanted to be Ronaldo in those instances. But bro, you haven't been the man like that on free kicks for damn near a decade now, man. It's been damn near a decade that Ronaldo has been a consistent threat from free kicks. At some point, you got to let this shit go, man. I don't like his, that his fans act like you can't criticize his performance about being a hater. And that's why, to be honest, me, I have not tweeted about Ronaldo once during this tournament. Check my Twitter. I haven't tweeted about him once. That doesn't mean I haven't had my opinions, but I haven't tweeted about him once. Just because I have my opinion on Ronaldo, I don't feel the need to keep beating the, the, the drum every single time. I don't, I don't feel the need to do that. Especially, he's an all-time great of the game. I'm not trying to be that guy that Ronaldo, at 39 years old, I'm just hating on him every single moment of his life. The, the guy, what he's doing right now, to be even at this level, to be even at the Euro starting for a team like this, it's, it's exemplary. But at some point, too, we have to be honest and hold him to the, the same standard as everybody else. It's not good enough anymore, man. It's not good enough. D bro, fans think with their hearts, not their heads. And you know what? That's a big issue with Portugal, to be honest, right? Portugal in general as a team. And maybe it's a figure, it's, it's a representation of their captain. But Portugal play way too emotional. And that's going to be their biggest downfall at this tournament. They play way too much with their heart. At some point, somebody has to have just the poise and the level-headedness to just slow shit down. There was this amazing article that Sid Lowe uh, wrote today on Rodri. Because Rodri was called by his coach, uh, De La Fuente, De La Fuente called Rodri a human computer, a human supercomputer. 
And it's because at one point in the Spain game, where, where Spain, who were peppering Georgia, but then Georgia got that one, and then almost made it two, and all of a sudden Spain started to lose control, Rodri was the guy to look at everybody and just calm everything down. He, he literally, you can see it. There's a clip of it. Calm down, guys. Calm down. And Rodri even came out and said, sometimes the best way to, to gain control in a game is just to slow things down and just calm down. Portugal play with too much emotion. I don't know whether it's because they there's so much pressure on them, especially today, right? When Ronaldo misses that penalty, all of a sudden, I was telling Cam, every one of these players taking a penalty, including Ronaldo, are under way more pressure than they were before. Because it's not just anymore about winning it for Portugal. They have to make sure Ronaldo doesn't exit this tournament the way he just did. But there's so much pressure on Portugal. And I feel like they play that way as well too. It doesn't look like they're enjoying themselves when they're playing out there. Calm down. Everything is played at a million miles an hour. Even Pepe, who in the group stage, I thought was amazing. I thought it was amazing today uh, in the group stages for Portugal. Today, for the first time in a long time, I saw Pepe rattled. Even before the miss. Just a slight amount of pressure when he's kind of turning on the ball. And all of a sudden, Pepe just lost his head. The oldest player at this tournament lost his cool. And he's so lucky today that Sesco doesn't have the bottle. Give Old Black his flowers. Wow. Old Black is an incredible goalkeeper. One of the best of his generation. Incredible, incredible, incredible goalkeeper. But I was very surprised he, he saved Ronaldo's penalty. Because as far as I've seen Old Black, he is not what I would call a great penalty stopper. I don't think so. I was incredibly shocked that he saved the first one, and he almost even got a hand on the second one. He gets the right way. But Old Black, for me, has never been someone I consider a great penalty stopper. But today, today Old Black was almost the hero. What, the way we're talking about Diogo Costa, that was almost Old Black. So massive shout out to him. Massive shout out to, to, to Slovenia's defense in general, man. Honestly, massive shout out to Slovenia in general. Incredible tournament. To almost eliminate Portugal the way they did today, incredible. They deserve massive, massive flowers. Uh, unfortunately, football is decided by tiny moments. Just the way I was talking about Jude yesterday. Moments make magic. Football is decided by fine, fine margins. It's, it's a game about consistency and 90 minutes and all that great stuff. I get that. But at the end of the day, the moments are the ones that decide it. And today, the two moments are Sesco's miss and Diego Costa in the penalty shootout. This has to be Ronaldo's last tournament. Uh, yeah, 1,000%. 1,000%. Everyone counting out Ronaldo again. Veer. Veer. Cristiano Ronaldo is 39 years old. This is, this is, what, this is what starts to annoy me, right? Because Faisal did the same shit when we did the preview for the Euros. Oh, everyone is discounting Ronaldo, and this is when Ronaldo thrives, and this is hating, and oh, just, just don't come back crying. Ronaldo is 39 years old. Why can't we just accept that this is who he is now, guys? There, You guys are writing checks that a 39-year-old is no longer able to, to, to cash in. At some point, you got to just accept the fact that, look, it catches up to everybody. And Ronaldo has escaped father time longer than any player I've seen, or longer than most I've seen. But yo... He's not invincible, bro. He's not immortal. At the end of the day, he's made of skin and bones and flesh just like the rest of us. Why don't I talk about Bruno? Bruno wasn't great. Bruno hasn't had a great tournament, to be honest with you. Bruno, Bruno is this, not disappointing me, right? Um, I don't think he's been Portugal's worst performer, to be honest with you. But he hasn't been great either. I thought, Por I thought Bruno had a genuine case of winning player of the tournament. Just because the way I've seen him play for Portugal, even at the last World Cup, I thought he was really good. He hasn't lived up to those standards whatsoever. But I don't know if Bruno is the first player I would kind of look at after tonight's game. He hasn't been great, but there are, there are worse players than Bruno. And this is coming from somebody that famously is not the biggest fan of Bruno Fernandes. But I don't know if Bruno is one of the first players I'm pointing out after these last few performances. Opinion on subbing out uh, Leao and Vitinha. Le Leao, right? I saw Fuad kind of talking about Leao and saying, Oh, Leao, I want to like you, but you're disappointing me. I thought Leao in the first half was Portugal's most dangerous player. He was carrying the ball really well in open space, an absolute monster. He, he, for me, it was Portugal's biggest threat. And I think the attack kind of shifts over to the right where Cancelo was starting to get a whole lot of the ball in the second half. But I thought Leao today in the first half was, was Portugal's best player. And Vitinha, Vitinha is really tidy. Vitinha just keeps it ticking. But at the same time too, Vitinha needs to be a bit more effective with the ball, man. Right? He's efficient. But is he effective? And maybe that's not his role in the team. Maybe we're looking at a Bruno to do more, more in terms of creating chances. But at some time, being cute on the half turn and spinning and, and keeping it ticking and playing short passes, that's important. No doubt about it. You need to keep the ball. And Vitinha does that to a high level. But at some time too, as a midfielder, just the way Fabregas said it in the opening weeks of the tournament, playing it forward and driving the ball forward and, and bringing the initiative forward is the most important thing for a midfielder. And I, I do feel at times with Vitinha, it's like, okay, it's cute. It's nice. You're not making any mistakes. You're keeping the ball well. You look really good on the eye. But what's your net value to this team? At, at the moment, I almost feel like he's just like net neutral. I need a bit more positive from, from Vitinha. Bernardo Silva, for me, is the most disappointing player in this Portugal team. He has been for as long as I can remember. He never manages to turn his, his form around for City the way he, uh, like, into his Portugal career. I, I never feel like he replicates his City form to the Portugal form. Maybe it's because he's not playing in the right kind of, of, of style. I don't know. 
but he's never moved me for Portugal. But for me, the most disappointing players today are actually Ronaldo and Pepe, which is crazy because they're the two most experienced ones. But those were the two today that I really, really like kind of looked at and said, wow, for players of this experience, of this level, I feel like you guys lost your heads. And for a team this young that needs to look at their experienced guys, 